In this video, I will demonstrate how to do basic data entry and how to manipulate the appearance of data that you've entered into your spreadsheet. So in a typical spreadsheet environment, we will see that we have rows as indicated by the numbers along the left-hand side, and each row delineates a single data point or a single subject. And then the columns along the top is indicated by the letter is typically where we're going to place our different variables. So typically as we enter data, uh, we're going to include the name of the variables in the first row. So we might have a ID number for to differentiate each subject. We might have a column that's going to indicate that person's sex and perhaps their age and so on. Now the size of the name or how we write the name of each variable, uh, we don't, don't really have any limitations as far as um, the size and how we um, name each variable as far as you can use numbers, you can use characters, you can put spaces and so forth. So there aren't really a lot of limitations there. We'll talk a little bit about being able to see all the variable names depending on their size when we talk about appearance in a second. So once we've entered in our, our different columns and we've named them, now we can begin to enter data. So let's say this individual is ID number one, and then to move between the cells, you can use the arrow keys, which I find to be the most effective. You can go either up, down, or left or right. Um, if you want to go directly to the row below the row you're in, you can hit the enter button and that will move you to the row below. But in this case, I want to move to the row to the right, so I'm using my arrow keys. Now, when we have a categorical variable like sex, we have to provide a code, a numeric code, for each of our uh, qualitative descriptors. So for sex, we have male and female, so we have to differentiate ahead of time which numeric code we're using. In this case, I'm going to use one for male and two for female. So subject number one is a male, and their age is 25. Then I can move down to the next subject, and I can move through the process in that manner as I enter data. Now some things we can do uh, as far as the appearance of the data we enter, let's say we have a, a fairly large variable name like state of residence. Um, as we look at it, it looks like the cell is going to include the full name, but when I go to enter in another variable, let's say we're going to enter in weight, you can see the, the name of variable D we can't see the entire name of that variable and so that can become problematic if we we've got variable names that can be very similar but we can't see the entire name to differentiate them so we can we can mess with the or change the appearance um, of these by uh, changing the format of the cell so if we go to the cell uh, option here and click on format we can have the format of the cell automatically fit the, da the uh, data that we enter into the column. So we want to highlight that column, so the column that we're interested in. We go to the Format button, and then we click on Auto Fit Column Width, and it will automatically change the width of the column to fit all of the data um, in that variable name. Now we want to make sure we don't have variable names that are really long. Um, that our entire sentences because that could make our spreadsheet quite wide and make navigating it difficult. But this is not an unreasonable way to change data. Now another thing we can do, well, especially when we have numeric data, uh, how the numbers are presented can also be manipulated. So let's say we entered in a weight and we had several decimal places that we entered in. And maybe we're only interested in seeing a whole number or maybe a number with just one or two decimals. So we can change how that will appear. So we go back to the home menu again and then we find the option that's labeled number and we can click on the little arrow at the corner here and then we highlight the category called number and here where we can change the number of, number of decimal places uh, that we might want to see. Maybe we only want to see one decimal place in our numbers. Uh, if we're working with large numbers that are in the thousands or greater and you want to have a comma to separate the thousands, you can click on that option as well. 
and you can see as you make each change you have examples of what it will look like in this window below. Also you have to decide how you want to deal with negative numbers if you're going to have negative numbers and how they appear um, in the data. Um, do you want a, a, a minus sign or negative sign in front of each number or do you want negative numbers to be represented by red or do you want them to be represented by parentheses? So that's up to you to decide how you want them to be presented. Uh, in most cases, we're, we're going to want to see that minus number unless we're doing some accounting and typically we either use red numbers or parentheses numbers to indicate a negative number. So this is a way to kind of change how we want our numbers to look. And we can click OK. Um, and so in this case, let's go ahead and change this number so we only want to see uh, one decimal place. And then we can see that, that change. So hopefully this gives you a basic primer of how data is entered in and how we can change the appearance of the data in a basic Excel spreadsheet. Further videos will go more in depth as to how we do different functions related to the analysis of the data, but hopefully this will give you a good understanding of how data is entered into Excel.